Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent, more imminent today than it was yesterday. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy shift. So I know when this happens that the Lord has a message for me to get up and and to do so I am going to be obedient and share whatever's on my heart and whatever the Lord wants me to share. So, um, yeah, it's been rather crazy, this shift. And usually nurses would call it a full moon. Um, but we know it's not a full moon. Um, anyway, what is a prodigal? A prodigal is someone who only believes they have forfeited their salvation when the fact of the matter is Prodigals cannot lose their salvation. Once we are saved, we are eternally sealed. We are married to the groom. He seals us with his Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, we may walk away at some point. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay, a lot of us leave the traditional church, never understanding that we are the church. And there's an internal inkling inside of us telling us, you don't belong in these situations. You don't belong with the world. You don't belong. That's because we don't belong. We belong to Jesus Christ, beloved. That's the Holy Spirit inside of us when we received the gospel, when we believed the gospel, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to scripture, that he rose, was buried, and then he rose again on the third day. Okay, that is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins, all of our sins, that he was buried and on the third day rose again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world, but that through him we might have eternal life. I am going to share from my book, Behold Thine Enemy. Because although we have power over that enemy, God wants you to know that you do have an enemy. Because that's what kept me wandering for so many years. Locked up in my own mind. And, you know, if you're not saved and you are within the sound of my voice, I urge you, the rapture is about to happen um, we are in the final moments of the end of days. I believe that 100%. We are the final generation. We are the final generation before the end of the dispensation of grace. And if you are not saved and you are within the sound of my voice, God made it very simple, beloved. A is to simply admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. And the Bible says that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. B is to simply believe that Jesus Christ, and that's what is the key point, believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And C, call upon his name. It's as easy as that. Church complicates it. Religion complicates it. God does not complicate it. He made it very simple that a child could believe. Okay, so... We believe and receive that fact, the blood atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the only way to the Father is through the Son. The only way, not through Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, not through the prayers of our ancestors, not through uh, thinking that we've worked hard enough, not through works, never. It's through Jesus Christ's blood alone, alone. And it's not like once we get saved, um, we've got to sustain that. And that's where we go wrong, a lot of us. Jesus Christ, he who began a good work and you shall perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Remember that. It's the Holy Spirit's job to complete that which he started. It's his job, it's not yours. And it's his covenant with the Father. Jesus said, I will not lose, not one that you gave me, Father. Not one. Okay, so... You know, Israel, Times of Israel, May 9th, Israel's defense forces begins its largest exercise in decades, dubbed Chariots of Fire. Keep your eyes on Israel, guys. Israel is God's beloved 
time piece. That's the clock and the clock is ticking. All right. So it's going down. It is going down. Prophecy is unfolding at warp speed. I don't want to get any strikes against my channel or anything. Um, but there's a lot happening. What is this crazy stuff with women? Uh, babies aren't even, they can't have formula. Um, read the book of Revelation, what's going on. If the tribulation is setting up all around us right now, cryptocurrency, um, new one world government, one world religion, um, one world currency, how much closer the rapture? The rapture is when Jesus Christ descends into those clouds, that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with those words and encourage one another as we see the day approaching. What day? The rapture, our blessed hope. Okay, so I know there is a devil for his demons had me in chains, a prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. My life was one big question mark. My nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could. To where? I did not know. Hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from this foe. Through my journey into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me and keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. I love that. That is one of my favorite ones the Lord gave me. He's given me so many over the years, but... This is called Behind the Mask, okay? A lot of us don't know that there's an enemy, and that is our greatest, greatest downfall. Who is Satan? <laughs> basically, what I just shared with you, basically that was my life in a nutshell, a prisoner. Life was a constant state of confusion, chaos, and drama. That I truly had no clue why. Like a pawn in the game of life, I was merely along for the ride, retaining zero power to change my life or question my direction. Who knew? And if someone did know, why didn't they notify me? Thus, my urgency to notify and actively inform you. Many people do not know that the devil at one time actually served God inhabiting heaven. The prophet Isaiah gives a glimpse into what caused his fall, resulting in his becoming our adversary. God did not create Satan Rather, he created the most glorious angel in heaven. Mm. Yeah, known as Lucifer, son of the morning. He was majestically beautiful, but is now sinister with dark supernatural ability operating from high places. The Bible refers to Satan as the deceiver, mm. destroyer, liar, murderer, thief, whose sole purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy whatever and whomever he can while he still can and he knows his time is short <laughs> we all have different images of or definitions of water who the enemy might be or what an enemy is some say it's the obvious evil existing within our daily world i.e thieves rapists murderers taliban isis kkk hitler's unthinkable murders of over six million jews or on a more personal level, a deceptive, unfair boss, cheating ex-spouse, you name it, the list goes on and on. He's the influencer of all evil and works through whomever allows him access. When Lucifer fell, he took one third of the angels with him. We call them demons and Satan is their master. Many people imagine the devil to be that little red man in cartoon with horns and lights and a tail with a holding a pitchfork, a dangerous and harmful deception ever so far from the truth and exactly what he wants the world to believe. Match.com's ad is precisely what I'm talking about. 
In this video, Satan in 2020, a female with a dating profile, conveniently hooks up on Match.com. This snippet of Love Story by Taylor Swift has been viewed millions of times by impressionable audience, encouraging a dangerously harmful depiction of innocence. Just like the enemy to put a twist of sick humor and innocence on himself when portraying the harmless character he wants the world to think he is, as he possesses his for selfies, as he poses for selfies with his new Match 2020 in front of the dumpster. I don't know if you've seen it, but look it up on YouTube. Ridiculous. Um, even rushing to the church to get married. Satan rushing to the church to get married. I mean, he is in the church, but characterizing himself as clever, appealing, appetizing, harmless, and even, God forbid, a match. Get the picture yet? You're getting the picture yet. Okay, so he's not what people characterize him out to be, like always evil, and yes, he is evil, but gloriously beautiful too. He is um, seductive, okay, deceptive. He came to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? And people think it's funny, you know, to be dressed up in evil costumes and, you know, wicked, wicked. There's an agenda to that. If you don't know who the enemy is and you're doing that, you're opening doors, beloved. You are opening doors to demonic spirits. All right. All right. Um, before he fell, Satan, in his original wisdom and beauty, was the consummation of perfection. Now his profane hunger is to pull God down from his throne, impossible feet, by endeavoring to distort God's glory in the hearts and minds of those who seek him. The Bible also describes Satan as a light bearer. See? So we know for certain he must have a beautiful side, or at least a deceptively satisfying side. Or why would Hollywood be so intrigued? Yep, you're catching on the influence of demonic spirits. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says that the devil is called the little g god of this world. So we know demonic forces are certainly at work, influencing world leaders. Hello, the fake media, our faulty belief systems and perceptions. Perceptions, what's going on between here? Actually, Satan is the existing force behind every work of darkness, the internal dialogue inside everyone's head screaming that we're not okay, that we'll never be okay, that God is mad at us, blah, blah, blah. Some of his most common titles, the devil, slander, Lucifer, son of the morning, prince of darkness, angel of light, God of this world, father of lies, Beelzebub, uh, roaring lion, serpent, dragon, accuser. He is the adversary of God and God's lineage. And you can bet that as long as he's permitted access, he will relentlessly plot to deceive and distract the world with special coverage on the elect. Have you ever considered just what and who he came to steal, kill, and destroy, and why? It might be just to your advantage to find out because you, my friend, are not exempt from his radar. A true treasure is what our spiritual inheritance is, and that cannot be stolen ever, but it can certainly be hidden from our sight, from our perception. As evidenced by the media and current headlines, racism, hatred, rioting, looting, vandalism, and murder share today's spotlight. And you betcha Satan has everything to do with that spotlight. The devil doesn't just shake your hand and say, pleased to meet you, won't you guess my name? Mm -mm. On the contrary, he beguiles us into believing that we're receiving extraordinary privileges or rewards 
when he offers us his will, his ideas, his evil inventions, but sadly that exchange, and I can attest to that, eventually leads only to his ultimate goal of destruction and death. Since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, his intent to deceive the world, however, however he can, by whatever means he can, for as long as he can, is, is working, but that is soon to end. The enemy works through whomever allows him access. He is a created spirit being of the order of angels called cherubim and has a well-structured rank of demons, fallen angels, tending to his business. It's not the Republicans, Democrats, or Independents causing this havoc. It's Satan. 1 John 3, 9, For this reason the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. And yes, my friend, the works of the devil are more than abortion, death, thievery, and destruction. More often, they're subtle, hidden snares, webs lying deep within the subconscious mind that, left unresolved, eventually lead us down roads God never intended us to walk down with strangers he never intended for us to meet. Satan will one day be eternally assigned his place in the lake of fire, Revelation 20, 15. But now, the Bible warns us to stay alert and watch out for your great enemy. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. Bottom line, don't let that someone be you. Okay? So, we're at 16 some minutes. Okay, so... Like in my in my private time with the Lord tonight, um, I just you know the Lord that chariots of fire that that I was sharing with you guys. Israel's defense forces begin its largest exercise in decades, dubbed chariots of fire. Right? I just felt like putting on I put on YouTube chariots of fire, and God, what a beautiful, beautiful! It was just so I was so blessed to hear that. You know, it just struck a chord in my heart. And, you know, if, if you get a chance, just Google that and you'll see the guy running. I mean, you know, that's our race. We are running the race, guys. And this race is getting hard, you know. But Jesus Christ is with us. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He is not going to give up on us. 